Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will be discussing how to build layers with watercolors. Now this is going to be the process from the beginning to the end, and also some tips and tricks that I use throughout that process. So, as you can already see, we're in that blocking phase, that main blocking phase where we just start to saturate our paper with our base colors. I'm throwing in blues, greens, yellows, and browns. Now the key with the blocking phase is to build that saturation and to also build contrast without necessarily using black or white. Just use your main pigments. The idea here is to max out on layers. If you don't know how far you can push your paper with your pigments, then you just gotta go for it and try it out. Rather that's with a piece that you don't care about or just a practice piece and just keep layering and layering and layering. However, if you are working on cotton paper, you should be able to go and go and go until your heart gives out. The idea is to not give up too soon when it comes to this blocking in phase, and that's not just with your background, but also with your subject. Always know that after it dries, you can add another layer, you can add another highlight, you can get more detail. Until your paper starts to pill and rip, you can keep going. <laughs> And you will just see me go back and forth and back and forth. In these time lapses, I am all over the paper. And that's because I am just repeating the same process over and over again. Highlight, shadow, saturation, highlight, shadow, saturation. But I'm just doing that with my pigments, not white or black necessarily. So in this case, my lightest lights are like my yellow greens, my very light greens. And my shadows are my blue tones, my brown tones. And then after you think you already have something so pigmented that you couldn't possibly go over it even more, well here I am then going in the opposite direction of this fallen over tree with moss. I'm brushing right over it, coming right down with the green, and of course that first layer is very thin, it's very light, but it's gonna dry, and I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again. Oh, and just wait until we get the pencils in there, baby. My favorite part about mixed medias is really being able to just go in when you think something is at its limit and then you bring a pencil in over watercolor paint or gouache and then it's like a whole new ball game. Like you can get these fine details, you can get strong contrast, you can get very sharp lines, deep shadows, bright highlights, like right on top of it too, like as if that underneath layer isn't even there. And then you can blend if you want to, which I do multiple times. I felt like I did the same layer of moss, and you'll notice this too, with any layer on something you do, you're gonna feel like you did the same layer on something like three, four, or five times before it starts to look different. But you don't realize that it looks different each time until you watch it. The process I'm doing right now, I just... It drove me nuts when I was creating this, guys, because I felt like I did this like seven times. <laughs> especially uh, with the foliage. And this, this also comes back to the splatting technique too. So it's not just doing this with your brush strokes. When you're doing your splats, I felt like I did it like six, seven times and it still didn't look how I wanted it to look. And I had to keep splatting and then resaturating, reglazing, 
letting it dry. Splats, saturate, glaze, redry. Same thing, over, over, over again. And that's what those paper towels there are for. So it's something I just recently started incorporating, but to have more control over my splat technique, I have been just putting chunks of paper towel to protect my foreground and my subjects from areas that I don't want those splats to go. And it's been working very, very well. Just make sure that before you cover that area with a paper towel that it is fully dry so you don't pick up any of the pigment that you just laid down. And believe it or not guys, I have compacted 20 hours of film into just a touch over 20 minutes for you. <laughs> So every minute you see here is roughly an hour of painting. It may look like I was able to do this in a day, but no, it actually, this painting was spread out over the course of two weeks. Two whole weeks, yes. More saturation, and then... Finally, I'm starting to bring black in with this, but I'm not doing flat black. Now, we discussed this in other videos. Do not just use plain black. Um, I mix black, the watercolor, with um, blues, indigos, greens, so it was not flat when I was blending in the shadows in my water and also the undertones of my tree. The only time you will see me use pure black in this painting is in the wood grain and at the very bottom of the moss where I really want to make it stick out. I really want it to um, pop from its surroundings. So I go in with my black watercolor pencil. They are a huge help in this entire painting to get the details I needed. and. Uh, that's the only time I went in with pure black, but otherwise all the other colors that I'm mixing were mixed with other hues of greens and blues, even purple, to get very nice soft undertones so things did not come out flat. And even where I did use that black pencil, it was still mixed with other colored pencils, whether that was browns, greens, blues, so nothing would look flat. I did use white. I did use a pit marker. I did use white gouache here at the very top of that log. Uh, I really wanted to light it up. I really wanted that sun kind of just grazing over the top of this moss. And I really wanted that light to just pop in the back. I wanted it to bring this swamp to life. In any art piece you do, your light source is probably one of the most important things other than remaining accurate to your subject or your reference photo. Now in this, I did not use a reference photo. None. This was a bit of a challenge for me, especially painting a white animal. I didn't look at anything for this. <laughs> and uh, I didn't end up regretting it I, because it left me more room to play. As you can see by the thumbnail, I definitely have a lot of different colors in that stag, and I've learned with painting anything white, it's almost not white at all. <laughs> White's like the last color I used in there. I probably used tons of varieties of off-whites of different, with, <clears throat> with different blues and greens and purples all shaded into it to get different shadows and effects. go and now with some light beams yeah so when I took that from the back I actually I almost didn't put any color in uh, in my skyline it wasn't until later that I put a little bit of blue in there it was almost completely whited out but I didn't leave the paper white because it wouldn't look right 
but it's so bright. With the light beams popping through like that, I really just wanted it to hit that water and light it up. And then also, like I said, it was going to come over that moss and then slightly hit the back of that deer and just make things very vibrant, very alive. I think I spent more time building the moss on this tree, this fallen tree, than I did anything else in this painting. It took forever. Like I said, guys, so many layers. So many layers. And it was just like back and forth between like going up and down with the lights and the darks, the lights and the darks, this shade of green, that shade of green, white, black, like, and mixing and blending and redefining and adding detail and getting all these little hues and tones right so it didn't come off as too much of this color, too much of that color. Like, I want to say I did over 30 layers on <laughs> just the moss, guys. fun painting the uh the bark in this tree in the foreground and doing the roots that are coming in and out of the water it just it was a fun layering process in my opinion just because you can see how i build it up and then i didn't necessarily intend to put bark in there it just kind of played out that way right like that's just kind of how the paint laid and how it dried so i just was like yeah sure why not and i took a pencil and i followed the little rivets where the paint was like darker and then it started to look like bark to me, so then I just turned it into bark, I guess. Um, and I went in first with like dark greens. And um, where those light spots were left, then I went over that with light green. And then I re-darkened with different shades of browns, different shades of greens. And you'll see as I let things dry and I come back and then I'll re-highlight it. And then I'll go in with the yellow green. And then eventually I'll go in with a white. Like I slowly built my highlights and I slowly built my shadows. And eventually I go from my darkest darks from blacks to whites at the very, very end. And uh, there's a lot of detail. I had so much fun doing the water too. Uh, <laughs> just building all those different colors, reflecting in it, and then putting the leaves down in there with the roots sticking out of the water and the ripples from the deer walking through. I was just doing little scribbles of specks like I, I was so lazy about this, guys. Like, I just, <laughs> I just took my little watercolor pencil and I scribbled in there, like, here's a yellow dot and a blue dot and a white dot. And then I would take a flat brush and I just glazed over it. I did that like four or five times before I got sick of it. <laughs> I was like, it's fine. No more. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and then I, uh, I took that pit marker and I redefined my water lines and I did a few little, like, the tiny, tiny little specky dots, the like, like, tiny little dots, to make it look like the, the water was glistening, I guess. Um, I was like, yeah, sure, that looks fine. Uh, <laughs> it's not exactly what I wanted, but again, I, I was using no reference photo, and I saw this thing in my head, and I'm like, yeah, I want to make this thing, and um, I did the best I could, all right? <laughs> I'm still happy with it. If it wasn't for that pit marker, I don't know how I would... Yeah. Guys, Faber-Castell pit markers. Lifesaver. That's all I gotta say. There I am with that splatting technique again. Like I said, I did this so many times, guys. Like, I just kept rebuilding and rebuilding. Let it dry, reglaze, rewash, and then rebuilding all those highlights, the saturation. Let it dry, put my little towels back over, re-splat. And I work dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. Just over and over again. It's just a constant repeating of the same process, but all over the place. Because as, a, as you can see, it's a time lapse and I'm just everywhere, so it probably makes no sense. Like, that little middle patch, too, that I was just working on is one of my favorite spots in the whole piece. I thought it turned out really cool just because of how the moss was built and then how the splats looked on top. And then, as you'll see when I put the butterflies in, it just looked really, really nice. I thought it was a very nice focal point to complement the stag. Now, 
working on him. So, you think the first color you're gonna go in with is white, honey, right? No. <laughs> first color I went in was green and blue, and I started working with my shadows. I knew that after I got those in, I could go in with white wash and I could start working in my highlights and starting to balance things out. I'm like, I have to create all these shadows because the undercarriage of his belly, his arms, his legs, his neck, because that's obviously darker, you know? He's facing away from the light, he's in the water, it's reflecting on him. I'm like, okay, so how am I gonna do this? Well, where would the shadows naturally be? And then I went from there and I started putting in, instead of like a shadow, like you would black or something, I went in with uh, the surrounding colors. And then for his horns, I ended up, um, I was a little torn here. I wanted to, I didn't know if I wanted to do white, or if I wanted to do brown, or if I wanted to like make them like gray. And I decided to kind of do a mix. So I ended up taking gouache and a couple of other colors, like very light, light brown colors and um, made very uh, almost cream yeah like bone bone color really and I uh, went in with that gouache and kind of layered it and then I went in with my pencils and I actually did like it's hard to tell but if you're actually looking at it up close I went in with uh, like sage greens and stuff and put that in the antlers for the grooves I went in with some darker browns to create shadows and then I highlighted it yes with white but a lot of cream colors instead I didn't make it as bright And I should have zoomed in for you guys for this. I don't know how I got as much detail in the eyes as I did. It doesn't, it looks probably like a black little blob to you from here, but in in the actual painting, there's quite a bit of detail. You can actually see the color of the eyes in there and the whites of the eyes. And it's like, cool. Well, that's tiny. Yeah, I was big, big dainty about it. You can say that. I, I think I held my breath the entire time. I literally don't think I breathed when I did that. <laughs> yeah, doing that reflection underneath the tree was really cool too. I liked going in with the white pencil and uh, making that water reflect on it. like. I don't know, it just made it feel so much more lifelike. There I am, doing another layer on the moss. Shocker! <laughs> Yeah, doing that bark again, going in with my blacks and just redefining that part, it's just starting to pop now. And then after this, I know I go in with white and it's going to look so complete and I'm going to be so happy because it looks so complete. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple more brown tones in those antlers. And like I said, a few green tones. Thank God for that pit marker. Yeah, that pit marker completely outlined my uh, my stag and highlighted all my my brightest highlights every time. If it wasn't for that pit marker, I'd be there is no way I would have gotten those highlights in the deer. And the same with the eyes. I wouldn't have gotten the detail in the eyes without that fit marker. I remember getting this point in the painting when I was creating it and I, uh, I was like, okay. I can finally do the butterflies, I can finally do the birds, because I wanted to incorporate other wildlife in this. I wanted it to feel very alive, like this, um, this bayou, this swamp, this ecosystem, this enchanted ecosystem of all these beautiful colors. I just wanted to make it, I wanted to take it to the next level with my other work, for sure. Um, 
I wanted it to have a bit more going on in it than my previous work. Just doing some final shadows in the water, really defining where that light is uh, coming through in the foreground and the background. Man, I had so much fun with this, guys. I hope you liked watching this time lapse and listening to me rant about layering moss 30 times over because that was pain. But it made this, so it was worth it. I will be back with another time lapse for you guys soon. Actually, this week I have a acrylic rose painting coming for you guys, and I hope you are looking forward to it as much as I am. I'll see you guys then.